debt of innocence, the debt of emotions, burning of soul, burning of a sweet story. Rose, a lady, no, a witch, thirsty for blood, the lady of the darkness, the queen of the chaos. Burn, burn, burn. The sweetness, the love, the innocence was once hers, once now born. He must burn to claim her. Oh, Nirvana, my sweet Nirvana. Both fell into their dreamland, finding comfort in each other's embrace, the warmth and the peace of being in each other's arms. How strange love finds its way through everything. Even the most twisted people once feel it, can't let it go. It gives them hope to go on, to go for them. To make this place a better one so their loved ones don't suffer as they did. As enchanting as love is, it has its own toxic traits. Now what can love possibly do wrong? It is selfish and makes people selfish because they can turn the world upside down to make their beloved happy. They take control and keep all the ducks in lane. They lie to them just to not see them sad. But love is about letting go and letting them be. The power it holds over their beloved is divine and vice versa. The passions of love are cruel, but if they become tyrants in the name of love, they would gladly be the one. Live, kill, lie and die. All in the name of love. Jacob got out of the bathroom after showering and saw his beautiful fiancée stirring and moving her hand in his direction, finding him. Not finding, she opened her eyes to look over but didn't find him. A smile crept over his lips as the thought hit her that the first thing she thinks about getting up in the morning is him. She rolled over and saw him standing in a towel around his waist, hair dripping from the water. A droplet of water sneaking its way over his chest, going down over his abs and then disappearing in the towel over his V-line, making her jealous. Her mind raced to all the excited thoughts, but a sound of clearing thought pulled her out of her delicious imagination. As much as I would love to make those scenarios true, I have a meeting to attend, so I just I suggest you stop looking at me like that. The deep husky voice rang in the room. Winds of wrested a flip, she sat up straight on the bed. A hue of cherry appeared on her angelic face and her hair fell on the other side. The footstep caught her attention and she looked up to see her edible fiancé towering her. He put a hand on the headset and the other on under her chin. He made her look at him, his woodsy spicy scent messing with her hormones and he gave her a gentle peck on her lips. You look devastatingly able, pleading to be, he whispered and her eyes darkened. Then will you? She asked, laying back, spreading her for him. He chuckled, you are insatiable. He teased her, his spoon rang and he picked it up. She huffed and made a pout. He took his call from work while watching her, admiring her ring and then locking eyes with her and she gave him a flying kiss. Something hit him in the chest, that this woman can make him walk in the pit of horror and he would gladly do that for her. Laying in his bed, in his shirt, and with a ring of his name. He hovered over her and she giggled. He put his hand on her mouth to stop her. Removing his hand, he caressed her hair while listening to the person on the phone. He nuzzled in her neck and she smelled like him. He gave a tender kiss over the pearls, flicking over her neck, and got up, going to the closet. Wine whined and he smacked.
She went after him in the closet. She stood at the trestle, watching him putting his clothes on. She watched him while biting her bottom lip. His call ended. He locked eyes with her, heated ones to the huge mirror beside the wall. He remembered how drained she was last night, that she didn't even stare when he brought her back. His phone rang again and a frown placed on his forehead. What? I'm coming. He looked at wine and threw sweatpants at her. Put it on, he roared. Wine flinched at his outburst. What happened? She asked and he glared at her. Okay, she spoke, putting it on. He held her hand and didn't bother to put his tie or jacket on. He went to the other side of the compound and opened the door on the corner. She was confused and looked at him. She entered the room with him and looked around. And there was a bed, a rod with saline on it, a monitor, a whole setup of a hospital room. She heard a whimper and her blood went cold. Her insides crumpled, her heart racing. She turned and saw a tight figure shaking cold in the corner. Her hand shook in Jungkook's hand and he gave her a tight, light squeeze. She looked at him with her wide eyes. She locked eyes with him and something broke in her. A whimper caused her to break her eye contact and she ran up to the figure in the corner. She put her shaky hand on the person's shoulder and the person flinched, shivering. Her hair was covering her face. She looked up, trembling, Wyan's heart crushed. N Nuna? The person spoke in a broken voice. She nodded and she climbed in her arms and started sobbing. Nuna? She called out, Wine grabbed her arms around her and held her there, caressing her back and hair from time to time. Are we? Wine called her and she looked at her with her big dark grey eyes. She cupped her cheeks. Baby, my cupcake? She called her and Ari again broke into sobs. She took her to her bed and tucked her under and stayed with her until she again fell asleep. Her tears were making their way. Happy, sad, happy because her Ari was alive, sad because the man she trusted the most heard such a huge thing from her. She was confused. She looked over and saw Jungkook sitting on the chair, staring at her. She went to him and spoke without looking at him. I need to talk to you. She walked out, not caring about his response. Jungkook followed her in the corridor. He was following her and she turned around and pushed him back to the wall, holding the collar of his shirt. Why? She asked, her tears streaming down her cheeks and he moved his hand to wipe it off, but she yanked his hand and stepped back. How, how could you hide such a thing from me? Answer me, Jungkook, she asked him, her hands fisting. Wine, Jungkook spoke, taking a step closer to her. Don't, don't come near me, she whispered. You lied, she spoke in a broken voice. You lied to me for sake. Just yesterday you proposed to me, and today I found out that you have my sister, whom I believed, dead under the same roof as me how could you she spoke sliding down the wall how many lies are there to unfold wait you're stop stop right there so he told her he went to her and kneeled in front of her trust me i hide her from you because i didn't want to hurt you he told her holding her hands she tried to take her hands back, but he just tightened his hold. I was following you when I reached. I, I was late. There was only your sister and she was bleeding. I took her to our private doctor and he told me she, she was having an abortion and due to extreme penetration, screaming pain, bleeding and trauma, she went into a coma. I didn't know if mine cut him off. If what, huh? If he survives or not? If he would make it? 
or not and if not then i would have never known you are a liar she told him crying baby i just didn't want to hurt you she had less chances to live and you were so broke i couldn't i cannot but you did and in the worst way possible you did hurt me you lied you hide such a thing from me she burst out in tears he reached out to hold her but she stopped him leave me akara leave me alone jungkook she told him sternly he looked at her and hung his head low he stood up with a heavy heart and went away as she told him she saw him left and sat there crying contemplating what to believe Ari, this is the last bite, I promise, Wine told Ari, who was not finishing her food. Yes, Ari, finish it and we can play with your games, thing Akavi, one of Jungkook's deadly handsome friend, told Ari. Jinja? she asked excitedly with her doe eyes wide. He nodded and she squealed. How crazy that this little and innocent soul went to this much and still her innocence is what they couldn't steal her pure heart and her innocent soul we and ari bonded a lot in the past few weeks he makes her laugh and pulls her out of her comfort zone one has a clue that we likes her but her overprotective sister wants to keep everyone at arm's length though he helped her a lot mingling with people she developed a trauma, but she was recovering and interact, interacting with people. We brought his pet dog, Yutun, and she loved him. His dog is now more of hers and sleep next to her bed. We and the other hunts of Jungkook arrived shortly after her last argument with him. She hadn't talked to him since, but he left her a rose every day. She feels betrayed and couldn't sort it out. For seven years, she thought her baby sister died and she was alive and maybe longing for her Nuna. But her Nuna didn't know her whereabouts, let alone whereabouts. She didn't even know that she was alive until a, week, until a few weeks ago. They am play the hard level today and I will beat you today, Ari told V, jumping off the bed and putting on her slippers. She was about to go when Wine stopped her. Ari, I have to go for some work, is that okay? She asked hesitantly. Yeah, Nuna, have fun. Come on, Tay. She told her nonchalantly. Something hit her that her baby sister is not a baby anymore. Beside that, she is becoming a grown woman. And she's falling in love. It is beautiful to see her making progress that despite her traumatic past, she is living it. And we is making it happen beside her. After visiting the site, she turned her car to her house where she used to live before moving in with Jungkook. She sent her guards off. She wants some ta alone time. She looked at the dark interior, dead walls, spooky staircase, silent room which contains more memories of her crying than laughing. She moved to her closet and took out her Pandora box, the box which was her companion in the darkest parts of her life. She held the box in her hands and stared at it. A tear made its way down and she opened it. Dry roses with sharp thorns sat in there. These roses held hope and she dwelled in the petals forgetting about the thorns. All the memories of roses stalking, moving in for him and then falling in love with him. Wearing a ring of his name now, he absorbed her completely and then threw the truth to her face. Another tear fell down her cheeks when she looked at her beautiful red diamond sitting on her red ring finger. She threw the box on the floor, falling to the floor, sobbing. She doesn't know what it is, but she didn't like that. He hides something from her. 
her sobbing stopped, hearing a disc sound. Lifting her head, she looked up, and there stood her nightmare. When Moretti stood there in front of her with a sinister smile, fighting, fighting, he teased with a smirk. How bad is that? Is he a romantic? Gazing at the scattered roses. Hmm. Well, you never told us about how you met him. She looked to the other side, and Blake Moretti walked in. Wind came up and held her hair, making her hiss in pain. He made her stand up, and she tried to fight him. For sake, now I will shred your flesh in thread. Only then I will find peace. He groaned. Vine stared at him. She doesn't know how much they know about her. Dude, he turned her into a mafia doll. Just look at her. Luca spoke, stepping into the room. One thing confirmed. They don't know about her real identity. Second, she needs to let Jungkook know that she is in danger. She cannot escape yet because they are three and she is one and she cannot fight them or they will know her real identity. She went limp in his hand and fell on his chest, though she despised the place but she had to. He let her go and she fell on the floor with a thud when he released his hand in her hair. He nudged his foot on her shoulder and shook her a bit. Bro, she went out. Luca laughed. Let's see. Pick her up and throw her in the car. We need to get out of here. Blake spoke.